from even to all of it. Yeah, but I don't even make it also. We are in uh, London in front of the Bulgarian Embassy with uh, Orhan, who is a Bulgarian uh, Roma. You are holding a banner, Justice for Mitko. Who is Mitko? Mitko is 70 years old uh, Romani boy from Bulgaria who was attacked by a neo-Nazi on 18th of April. And this, uh, his attacker filmed the attack and posted it on his Facebook page. And then what happened to the attackers? He was detained by the police, but unfortunately he was released from the police custody after paying only 500 leva, which is about uh, 200 pounds. What did uh, Mitko suffer because of his attack? He was beaten up and humiliated because he told his attacker that Roma and Bulgarians are equal. But he was hospitalized then? No, he was not hospitalized, uh, but he, he was beaten and humiliated. And all Bulgaria, and not just Bulgaria, but many people around the world saw this humiliation of a Romani boy. Uh, he was defendless, helpless, and who didn't protect himself, didn't defend himself. So this uh, footage was an example of how you can be racist in Bulgaria and uh, get off uh, scot-free. It was an example of racism. And uh, the attacker of Mitko, whose name is Angel Kalev, uh, uh, believed that um, nothing will happen to him. That's why he put this photo on his Facebook page. Because in Bulgaria you can do such things and you will not be punished. Why? Because the racism is widespread, unfortunately, and there are many cases like this when the perpetrators uh, are not uh, charged with racial abuse. They are charged with hooliganism and get, they get just uh, fines or probation or some small sentences. Usually they don't go to the jail. But uh, authorities, uh, uh, what's the attitude? Well, the authorities uh, actually don't want to persecute such uh, hate crimes. The authorities deny uh, the existence of uh, racially motivated hate crimes in Bulgaria. And this is the biggest problem. This is why we are protesting here, because we want the Bulgarian authorities to take measure against this. Because this is not a single event. No. no. Um, there are many cases like this. There are also uh, dead cases, unfortunately, and um, the violence, the anti-Roma violence, um, is wider spread exactly because authorities don't get, don't take any legal measures to stop it. The same date, 8th of April, when Mitko was attacked, uh, back in the 1996, there was uh, another Romani boy who was killed by Nazis. And because Bulgarian authorities didn't uh, undertake uh, the necessary measures, Bulgaria was uh, uh, brought, uh, brought to the court in Strasbourg. Bulgaria was sentenced in Strasbourg for violation of the of the its own law of its own laws. About this killing, uh, the About this killing, uh, uh, another another uh, another uh, Romani boy was killed in the town of Schumen on the very same date. So it's repeat itself. It seems there is no improvement, and that's why we are, we want. That's why we are here to protest and to draw public attention on these events in Bulgaria. The responsible for these killings uh, have been uh, arrested? Uh? They have been arrested, but they haven't been effectively punished. That's why Bulgaria was brought to the court in Strasbourg. And about uh, Eastern Europe, not only Bulgaria have this kind of uh, problem. Michael Daduc, you are coming from uh, Czechoslovakia. 
Good afternoon. Today is 16 May and we are standing in front of the Bulgarian embassy for we are demanding justice for Mitko and also justice for all Roma. But I believe we should not just sitting standing in front of the Bulgarian embassy and we should stand in front of all Eastern European and South European embassies which are continuing discriminating the Roma and spreading the hate speech in the politics. I'm the founder of Romani Nation Movement and we are today too, me and Orhan Tahir who stand with me together and bring in the petition to the Bulgarian embassy. But maybe in the future we will be more. It is, we are creating the movement which will be similar to the church. If you believe, you support it and you, you sign it, you show the support. We are not creating the trade mark which is very produced in the European Union. Also, I would like to, to, to thank all those people who show the solidarity with MITCO and who demand also the same thing which we demand. It is the justice for MITCO and 172 signatures will be today delivered to the Bulgarian embassy. I also would like to thank all the supporters on our social network who support the, the Romanian movement. Continue doing it. We're going to get bigger. Thank you. And uh, May 16 is an important date for uh, Romani people uh, about uh, the, uh, what happened in World War II. Let's remember it. Right, in the, in the 16th of May there was only one Romani resistance which we recognize in the history of Roma history. And it actually happened in the death camps in the Auschwitz where we have been tortured and murdered and people stood against this. At the moment, the global movement of Romani resistance is making several events across the, across the world, which we are now today standing in London. Another is happening tomorrow in Hungary, a uh, day before it happened in France, also in Czech Republic, where people demand, for example, in Czech Republic, people demand the pig farm will be removed from the producing the pig farm, where actually it was the Holocaust place where Romani, Czech Romani people have been murdered. Catherine Franks from the Jewish community, you are here for solidarity with Roma people. Yes, I just want to express my solidarity. I'm from the Jewish community and I think it's important that our communities work together and do show solidarity with each other. And May 16 is an important date also for your community because it's connected to a death camp which uh, um, Yes, yes, that's correct. And like I said, I think the solidarity between the two communities are important and it's good to support each other as we both suffered a lot of racism in the past and unfortunately in the present too. The glass act up, but also never again ever in front of the Bulgarian embassy, you two with the Roma people. Hi. Yeah, it's really good to be here today. I've got so much respect for the whole Roma Nation movement. I'm from a group called Never Again Ever, which looks at um, the meaning of the Holocaust today. It was set up by grandchildren of the Nazi Holocaust, not just Jewish, but Roma and LGBT and people whose grandparents were dis uh, dissidents and um, who were part of the underground movement in the Nazi Holocaust. And for me, it's looking at how the infrastructure of the Holocaust is still alive today. It's very easy to say, never again, it's over, it's something 70 years ago. But when we still see the rise of the Nazi, neo-Nazi movement, if we're looking in Bulgaria, if we see illegal force removal of the Roma community in the UK, it's far from over. So we're not going to stop until the infrastructure of the Holocaust is truly put to rest. So yeah, it, what we also try and do is challenge what's called the Holocaust hierarchy, that the Jewish story gets the most attention. But in fact, the Roman community were huge, significant numbers of people who were killed, and every life is as equal, equally as important as each other. So it's been really great to build relationships with people part of the Roman nation movement, as well as different Roma communities who are challenging force removal and racism against the Roma community in the UK, as well as the rise of the neo-Nazis. And HIV is also a form of Holocaust. 
Yes. Uh, oh, wow, you stumped me there. I think anything, I mean, the, the definition of a Holocaust is a strategic genocide on a group of people. And you could also say very similarly with HIV, but due to government inaction and pharmaceutical greed, um, there has been a specific attack on a certain number of people. One of my, I, you know, I'm a big fan of Larry Kramer, who wrote a really good, good book called The AIDS Holocaust, saying the, the AIDS epidemic hasn't needed to kill millions of people across the world because we have the resources at our fingertips to deal with it. So when there's a strategic, strategic attack, either through action or specific inaction on a marginalised group of people, then yeah, you could say it is specific Holocaust. It, what you don't want to do is easily conflate each different Holocaust and say it's all the same one. But a specific attack which leads to genocide and mass killing of people, for me, is a Holocaust. You've got to, to look at each one in context. Thank you.